everyone and welcome back to the Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and the upgrade for me has arrived. Um, I wasn't sure how I was going to do for subscription boxes. I thought I think that this might be the last month where they're actually on time because by the end of June we will be moving to the new cave. So we're going to embrace this and make the most of it today and uh, let's see what our friends from Germany have in store for us this month. We get some supplies, we get a featured artist, we get a magazine and we get a prompt which is the upgrade battle to create something with all of these lovely goodies in the box. So let's take a look at the papery stuff first. Here are our stickers. Oh, these are so cute. This is our featured artist here. I really like this. That would make a that would make a lovely sticker. And they've done it all oh, like what they've done to the upgrade logo. Oh, oh, this is really nice. Okay, so this is Vivi Gonzalez art. Vivi Gonzalez. Vivi. My name is Viviana. Yeah, Viv Vivi or Vivi. A graphic designer from Chile. Oh, look, oh, our stuff's nice. Definitely getting a follow there. So Instagram and website as well if you want to check out more of Vivi's stuff. We'll pop this to the side. Oh, watercolour paper. Cold press watercolour paper. Three sheets. We've had this discussion. Absolute bare minimum as standard as far as Gem Gem here at the cave is concerned. One side seems to be slightly smoother than the other and I would wager that that's 250 GSM cold press watercolour paper. Happy with that. Here is our bottle post which we'll look at in just a little while. This magazine cover has absolutely nothing to do with the theme of this box. Well, um, cool. We've got some pencils. Uh, we've got a Lyra Rembrandt Polycolor. These pencils are kind of like unsung heroes. They're quite popular and people tell me that they're really good. I've never used like a full set of them and I've never I've never used them for any length of time other than what we've had in these boxes here. Um, so yeah, they're quite a thin barreled pencil. They makes them feel cheaper than some of the other oil-based equivalents because these are oil-based pencils. So we've got a gold ochre. And uh, a dark sepia as well. So that's two colours that go really nicely together. And uh, we'll test them out in just a wee minute. Oh. We've got a Milan paintbrush. Uh, I'm in a Milan 611. I love these paintbrushes. I've actually got one of these and it's probably past its best by now. Uh, I do love a teeny tiny paintbrush, which is exactly what this is. So I will probably be replacing my old one with this. I really like Milan paintbrushes. They're very similar to the Sea White of Brighton synthetic paintbrushes that I sell in Stash Shop um, and I think that's why they, they've got the same sort of springiness to them and I get on quite well with that. I, I get on really well with cheap paintbrushes. We have some paint. Right, now hang on a wee minute here. What is this bad boy? Oh, we've got some white gouache. Oh, we've got Talon's white gouache. Now that is um, interesting because my uh, last tube of Winsor & Newton gouache is on its last legs. Kind of like, I'm not quite squeezing out the end, but you know, it's kind of getting up that way and it's starting to get really sort of sticky and stodgy. So this could not have come at a better time for me. Um, let's see what we've got. So this, these are all watercolor series. Oh, series one, series two, and series three watercolor. We've got an indigo, yay! Quinacridone red, cadmium yellow, and an ultramarine as well. So we've got our primaries plus an indigo color, which makes me really happy because it's one of my favorite colors to paint with. So this is quite a nice little selection of supplies. So we are going to be mostly painting. The fact that we've only got this teeny tiny brush though, um, I don't know how I feel about that, but we'll soon find out. So let's take a look at our bottle post um, and then we can maybe do some swatching out. So this is the little magazine that comes in the box. And we're going straight into talking about the Rembrandt watercolor tubes, modern professional watercolors, ground multiple times on a triple roller mill to create an artist's quality fineness. Okay, that's good. Available in 120 very pure and intense colours, including specialties such as interference and granulating colours. We've got the Talons Gouache Extra Fine, a highly pigmented paint with a matte finish. Although gouache is popular among artists and designers for its intense and opaque colours, you get a very flat finish with, with gouache, which I love personally. Gives it a very cartoony feel if you're using it to paint. Uh, they can be made slightly more transparent by adding water. Gouache is made with a high concentration of high quality pigments and based on dextrin which gives the plant a smooth consistency and reduces surface gloss. Yeah if you get cheap um, gouache because of that it can end up being quite chalky you know like kids paints um, but a good quality gouache you will get this lovely flat matte finish and I love it. You can water it down to make it a bit more like watercolour. It doesn't behave in exactly the same way but you can get it to, to a similar standard uh, which is why gouache and watercolour go quite well together. So we've got our polycolor pencils here. High quality colored pencils for artists as well as hobbyists. 3.7 millimeter lead. 
and PEFC certified cedar colours ranging from deep tones to soft nuances. The individual colours can be blended perfectly. Okay, so really good pencils. The <laughs> little Milan brush. Oh! E. A zero, a number zero round. A uh, short wooden handle has black lacquered surface and nickel ferrule. The brush is made of synthetic bristles, which is suitable for watercolour and water techniques. I actually find that this works quite well with gouache as well because it's a little bit more sturdy, a bit rigid. You won't be doing much gouache with a brush that size, though, to be fair, unless it's teeny tiny highlights. 300 GSM paper. Eh, I was close enough. And this is the Art Space watercolour paper. 100% cotton. Ooh! 100% cotton is good. Colour can be mixed into each other to create great watercolour effects, colour gradations, and add additional colour to the initial colour while the surface is still wet, otherwise known as the wet and wet technique. Again, I don't know how much wet and wet we'll be doing with a brush this size, but that's absolutely fine. The paper is cold pressed, yes, it's, it's very textured indeed. Um, so yeah, quite looking forward to that because uh, you always want cotton paper. 100% cotton paper is the way forward. So this is a little bit about her artwork, which is so lovely. Like, I really like this. I'm, I'm into this. I am 100% into this. And some questions there for her. Very atmospheric. It's so simple, but so much atmosphere to it. That's very difficult to capture. Okay, so they've done like a little mock palette for you there to see some of the colours and what happens when you add water to them. Art out of the box with Katrin. So some of the stuff that she's tried here and she has explained as she's gone along what she's doing. So if you want to try this out for yourself, um, you know, just as a little experiment, that is a great place to start. Again, covering these areas, like areas this size with such a tiny paintbrush, I would be very tempted to use a bigger paintbrush. That might just be me though, but look, it's turned out so cute, so nice. And we've got our Sailor of the Month, which is Sarah. Interesting artwork, I actually really I like to see some more interesting and different subject matter as well. Like it's nice to to have something that's uh, that your eyeballs aren't used to. And here is Emily. <laughs> I love Emily's pages. I say that everyone look what she's done with this. It's so good. And she's done the pencils down the bottom here as well to show you what she achieved with those. Oh, Lou, that's super cute. I like that a lot. Isn't that nice? Thank you, Emily. You cheer my day up. <laughs> Expression over perfection. Oh, this was the one with the googly eyes. I had so much fun with this upcreate battle, um, especially recreating my one-eyed dog um, who's no longer with us. I had the best fun with that because we, we did actually stick a googly eye in our socket that she didn't have an eye in and it was hilarious. So the fact that I got to do that on paper as well was absolutely, it was just the best thing ever. So I really enjoyed this box. This was the winner. Um, this was just announced. Um, th that's a lot of pictures though. Uh, but love, lovely use of what was going on there. Um, we did have a googly eye in there too. So there we go. Um, all that's left to do is find out what our upcreate battle is. Circular Village. Oh, that's so cute. Yes. And that is very in keeping with our, our featured artist here as well. Oh, that's so cute. A round thing. <laughs> <laughs> your upgrade box 45, show us your round thing in whatever form, pack your life in a circle, show us your favourite landscape, your favourite city, your favourite person. The colours of the box invite you to bring your favourites, colourfuls with a touch of good humour on paper. It doesn't have to stay with one circle. We don't all have just one darling in our lives. We look forward to a festival of circles. That's nice. I like that as a prompt because although it's quite wide arc and pardon the pun on that arc circle, get it? No, dear. Shut up, Jim. <laughs> Although it's quite all-encompassing, um, it's still giving you good guidance. That is a very, very nice prompt. That is a good prompt and I am impressed. So uh, we've got a lot of creative freedom because of the, the watercolours we've got. We can go anywhere with this. And we do have the addition of this indigo colour as well as some gouache and these pencils as well. I think I'm going to have quite a good time with this. And uh, I've got, I feel a sticker coming on out of this one, guys. Right, let's test out some of this stuff. Uh, first of all, I'm really interested to see what these pencils look like on this paper. Okay, these feel nice and smooth. We're able to build that up quite nicely as well. Let's see what this ochre colour looks Oh, yeah. Oh, that's nice. like that a lot. Okay, maybe we can do what, do what um, Emily did and blend these together. Why not? Just working in a circular motion and going back over. So I'm layering it up. Yeah, we can get some really nice colour in there. I love pe like pencils are my favourite thing ever. Like I could I could I could go pencil all day. All day. I think there's something very therapeutic about it. I think that's what does it for me. That that sepia colour, it's definitely like a true sepia. 
It's not grey, it's not black and it's not brown. It is somewhere in the middle of all of those, so that's perfect. That's going to give us a really nice amount of contrast as well. Okay, so let's try out these paints. Oh, goodness me. I am not going to use the paintbrush that's in the upgrade. I want to be able to see the paint on the paper. The old trusty Sea White uh, synthetic number six round here, nothing special. Sell these in the stash shop, dirt cheap. If MD is interested in one of these, they come in a range of sizes. We also sell the flat ones as well. I'm just going to take this straight off the tube just to see what the colour's like. So the, oh, the red, oh, the red is good. Oh, it's good, it's good. And it's quite rich and creamy if we don't dilute it. But if we add water, 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 wowee. It's still really rich and pigmented, I'm impressed. This paper's really happy with this as well, which is super nice. Okay, I am enjoying the uh, the paint and I hope that it's consistent across the different colours. Oh, the yellow's a bit more well behaved. <laughs> it's it's kind of stayed in the tube. The red was, the red was raring to get out, but like, yeah, look. So that's actually really concentrated and really pigmented and we have the option to... That seems a lot less transparent than the, the red as well, which is strange. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of that. Yeah, okay. Mixes beautifully as well. Look at that on the paper. Ooh, hi there. <laughs> we're holding hands, we're holding hands to create orange. <laughs> yeah, so the, the, these paints are super vibrant. Super, super vibrant. But we can we can dilute them down to something that, that's quite sort of delicate as well. Okay, so the 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 primary blue and in inverted commas. Oh, it's itching to get out to is the uh, ultramarine. Got a little palette off to the side here. I'm just putting the excess down. Let's put it in that blob of water. Oh, that's fun. Look. Again, very vibrant, beautifully bright, and we can mix some of that. Look how that's traveling in that paint. That I love it when paint does that. That's that's what's supposed to happen. Can we make this look green? Let's move it about. Yeah. Oh, there we go, look. Lovely. Beautiful. So this is fun. <laughs> and this paper's lovely. I'm enjoying the way that the uh, the watercolour is interacting with the paper. That's exactly what we would want. And we've also got this indigo, which is one of my favourite colours. Wowee, it's a wee on its own journey as well. Look, blah. Um, It's one of my favourite colours to paint with, actually. I do like a good moody artwork. When I'm uh, cleaning off my brush, the, the paint is eager to come off the brush as well. Like it's easy to rinse off. That is a really dark colour. I don't have a paint puck. Normally I've got my little knobbly paint puck. I just have like a, a pot of water and I, I just kind of like went like that and it's taken off all of that indigo. So that's really good as well. It's obviously very water soluble, which you which would hope watercolour would be, but some are more reluctant than others sometimes. Um, I, and I can say just from doing this little bit of swatching, a tiny bit of this paint goes a really, really long way. Like I could have used a third of that and still had a really deep colour and pulled this out to whatever. Let's join it up here just for funsies. Let's join it up with this blue. Oh look, this is fun. Who needs to paint anything? We can just sit here and play with it on this paper because the paper's great. Ooh, ah, yeah. Right, okay, I am, I am super happy with this. Yes, okay. Now, here's the thing. We can see that these mix. We can see that these are very soluble and uh, they're very pigmented. We can make these interact with our pencils, but we've also got this gouache as well. Um, oh, God. <laughs> okay, everything's excited today. Oh, I'll put that in there. Okay, so gouache in its purest form. Um, very opaque, because it's talking about that sort of flat matte finish. It's great for highlights. I use it a lot for whiskers and animal portraits. Highlights and eyes is another favourite as well. So it has applications on its own, as in not used in conjunction with other gouache. So we can mix this with our paint as well, though this is what they were saying in the booklet. If I take a little bit of this and mix it in here, it will give us a more opaque paint and it'll obviously lighten it up because it's white so you're lifting that colour up but what it does is it gives us this sort of like a milky consistency because it's white um, but we look, we can cover up the pencil with that, we can actually cover it up so we can actually make like our own gouache type paints just by mixing in some of this white gouache with the traditional watercolour paints but this gives you so many options and I absolutely love it when they give us a white in with something like this because you have a choice. Look, let's try and do something with it on the paper just for funsies, look. So you wouldn't even, you, look, you could really go to town with that and not mix it properly, like just have fun with it. Give you some texture, some interest. 
you know, like the possibilities are endless with this. This is a really, really nice box. Really, really like it. It encompasses pretty much everything that I enjoy about art, which is farting about with water and paint on paper and pencils. Like, well, pfft, Gem Gem's done, right? We're done, <laughs> done here. So I think there's a high chance of creating something absolutely lovely. Now, one of the things I would like to do with this is to have something poking out of the circle. So maybe if I turn the paper this way, uh, that gives me room a bit, a little bit like this. Um, maybe maybe a bit more pokey outy than that, something like that. There's also been this uh, weird crossover again, like the, the cave is in chaos. Uh, the, the bubbly from the scroller boxes ended up in the upgrade. Don't know how that happened, but here we are. Anyway. I'm thinking about the colours we've got as well. I don't know where my little practice sheet's gone, it's disappeared. Um, the base colours that we've got here. The one thing I do know is if I'm going to do one of these uh, circle type things is mine's mostly going to be green unless we go for harvest colours, which are basically these colours here. Um, we're not quite at harvest time yet, I don't want to think about that. <laughs> well, see, first of all, I kind of like, I want to draw either like a, a cow head or like a dog head silhouette because I want it to be... Yeah, what if we have a, a dog head silhouette that comes out the top here? And maybe this is like some sort of lush meadow behind us. I kind of want to make it rounder than that. Rounder and shorter, the tail. I want to put like a, a little cliff here. Um, this, I'm kind of getting like vibes from my Imaginarium that I did. That was a lot of years ago now. Um, but that that's the kind of feeling I'm getting here. So like, I want a little bit of a, a, a cliff. <laughs> Maybe maybe this path leads down onto the cliff. I don't know. Yeah, let's do let's just do that. That's a great idea. Turn the path into the cliff, and then maybe there's like a body of water here, Ooh, and it could it could be falling off the edge again, a bit like the Imaginarium. It's just escaped the circle a little bit. I said this before when I did the Imaginarium. Like a, a a fence for me is like a feeling of safety because we use them to keep livestock in and stop them getting run over and stuff. Um, a lot of people see a fence as a restrictive thing, which I find very interesting. Um, very interesting indeed. I suppose we better have a little patchwork field type effort here. Um, so yeah, maybe 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 there's a little bit here. This could be our barley field. We could have a. We could just pretend the barley's at full height in the <laughs> in whatever season we're in here. Um, because I really would like to use this uh, gold ochre pencil for that. Yes, I'm a weirdo. Thank you very much. So yeah, let's have that. Obviously, the part where the cow is is going to be is going to be green. But I've got a feeling that nearly all of that's going to be green. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe we should have a tractor parked somewhere as well. Do you know, it's funny, in all the years that tractors have been around, the actual basic shape of them hasn't changed much. They're still, uh, they still have stupid big exhausts on the front like they did many, many moons ago. Yeah, so what I could do is I continue the greenery up around here. Let's have some leaves and things in here. Now the good thing is I've got this sepia pencil um, and I can use that to outline things if I want to. Obviously used a sketch pencil to, to do this outline here. So uh, let's get down to our circular village. Okay, a good place to start is this sky at the top here where I'm going to have my clouds and things because we might want to layer some of that stuff up. And I'm going to use a little bit of the white gouache here. Okay, uh, just for the purposes of mixing, I've got an old cheap brush here. I will not use this to paint on the, the surface, but we're going to struggle otherwise and I'm not having that. Okay, for the purposes of the execution that I require here, um, this paintbrush is not in the mustard. It's not really designed for this though, so I can't really fault. Because I mean, I've got one of these Milan brushes already. I, I just wouldn't use it for something like this. Um, they, they always say as well, though, in these challenges, it's like, oh yeah, you can use other stuff. And it's like, well, what's the point then? You know, what if you're, if you're going to say to us, you can use another paintbrush, why are you giving us a paintbrush? Right, anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll let that dry. The next thing, okay, I'm going to use the blue in its purer form here. I just watered it down a wee bit. Use this like normal watercolour. I'm going to use it down the bottom here in this watery part. So I'm going to pre-wet sections of the paper, try and get a little bit of wet and wet action going on here, look. I was kind of hoping, again, just because we're using a small brush, the paint's not going to travel the same because we're not picking up the same volume of paint. This is just the neat yellow. I feel like that's enough as it is. I'm not enjoying the texture of the paper with the size of this brush. Like I'm, I'm, I'm actually not enjoying this process at all. It's just really awkward. Like because uh, this is obviously the, um, the Milan brush is a synthetic brush. 
maybe not so adept at picking up water in the quantities that we would require right now, especially because it's a teeny tiny brush. So I'm just kind of like, I'm working my way along here and I'm trying to be, trying to be sensible, but it's, it's kind of frustrating. It's, it's at times like this, even I'm doing these kinds of challenges, it's times like this where I wish I paid more attention to watercolour. I mean, don't get me wrong, I do like to mess about with watercolour, but I would not consider myself accomplished in watercolour in any way, shape or form. I just do it because it's fun, guys. <laughs> this is dried to be a lovely green, I'm quite happy with that. Okay, so now here's the thing. So I've just mixed some gouache, some white gouache in with the um, the green paint. It's not made that much of a difference and I'm finding it very difficult to blend this out. But also as well, see if I take some clean water. It is letting me like use the thirsty brush technique, even with this tiny little brush. So I don't see what the problem was there about trying to... Um, about... <laughs> Trying to dilute out a brush stroke, like I don't understand. I just want to add in a like a really diluted blue colour here in, in the sky at the base. Like I feel as if this is really patchy and I think honestly it's to do with the gouache. I just feel as if I need to be tidying this up a bit, it's like pull yourself together. Okay, I think my water's starting to look a bit waterier now, which is great. Um, and again, I'm going to take a tiny bit of that indigo, add it to my brown. See, it's just giving me a slightly different shade there. And I'm just going to put that in there. And this is the, obviously, the, cl the cliff. Honestly, I'm like doing this a tiny bit at a time because otherwise it's torture <laughs> with such a small brush. Oh no, I've splooged. Let's see if we can spread that out now then. Try and go round the shape of my tractor here. I'm always really like hyper aware of when I'm really into something and when I'm not. And like I am not, normally this would be like right up my alley. I would be 100% into it and I'm just not feeling it at all. And I think it's the size of the brush, like the brush I feel is really restricting me right now. And this is quite tiresome, honestly. I think though this is good grounds for uh, a... um you know, more exploration. You know, sometimes I always say that, you know, like good ideas come out of some of these challenges. I think this might be one of these occasions. This would probably be a repaint at some point. Perhaps. All I want to do is get some paint down on the dang paper. Let's take the Prussian blue this time. Tiny spot of that in there. Okay, a bit of a brighter version, good. I'm gonna grab this white gouache here and just Put in a few accents here and there. Okay, so here's where the little brush is going to come into its own. And I am going to use it to paint in my tractor. <laughs> Entirely the wrong shade of green for any brand of tractor, just so you know, if you're not familiar with tractors. So this is a generic Gem Gem tractor, okay. And I'm going to let that dry and I'll put in the wheels with the, uh, with the, I nearly said the ochre pencil that I could do with the ochre pencil, that would be fine. So let's, let's think about this red now and maybe grab a tiny bit of blue. There's a nice sort of pinky purple colour coming and we can use that for some of these flowers here. So there's a little bit of a really bright pink colour just with a little bit of the, um, the gouache there and then I can go back to the actual paint colour. Clearly looks like, um... I want to say a chrysanthemum, is that the right flower? I am rubbish with um, And let's have like a daisy type flower here. So again, I'll, I'll draw in the outline of the petals for the, the, the daisy shaped one. Um, that would probably be better than trying to mess about with gouache. So uh, this pinky colour now here, I'm trying to avoid the, um, the gouache that I've added in. I'm taking a little bit more blue um, and just to make this more purpley. There we go. Oh, that's quite a nice shade of purple. And I've got like a bluebell type flower here. I would say um these these Rembrandt paints, the paints themselves seem to be to be fairly nice. The, you have to be so gentle with quantities. And this is why I, I tend not to favour uh, squeezy tube paints. I like them in a pan. Um I just don't feel as if I've got any control in terms of um in terms of the actual quantity. I don't know whether that's to do with motor skills because my left hand, which is my dominant hand, I'm not very good with pressure. And my right hand, obviously, my non-dominant hand. I'm like, oh, yeah, well, you know what happens there. So I, I'm not sure about that, but I, I, I just have a preference for pans. And I always have done from the very beginning. If I was going to use these paints on a regular basis, I would probably squeeze them out into into some half pans and put them in a palette somewhere. So for those of you that have been around and have been around long enough to know about the Imaginarium, um, basically... Uh, that was a, it was a scroller box prompt and it was talking about you know a place in your mind 
And in my Imaginarium, there are trees that the tops of the trees are shaped like paintbrushes. So that's where we're going with this now. So they, that naturally that lends itself to like autumnal shades because the actual head of the tree is a, is a paintbrush head, so it's bristles. Um, so they tend to be like a yellowish brownish colour, if that makes sense. So I'm really tempted to just grab a bit of this green and just see how that looks with the pencil. Just waiting for this to dry down here now. Okay, so while that's drying, I was going to add a bit more texture to the path, but I'm actually quite happy just leaving it as it is. So I suppose we're on to our cow here. My tractor's not dry enough either. I tell you what, let, let's do our barley field. Something that's really cool, and the grass does it as well, um, when we have, uh, if you're cutting grass fields for silage, so that's basically, um, you let the grass grow really long, and you cut it, but you bale it while it's still green, so it's not like making hay. Um, you bale it while it's still green, and you wrap it really tightly, and what it does is it ferments. So it's basically... Um, uh, it's like a pre like a preservation method and it means you can feed it to your cows in the winter and it's got higher nutritional value than straw um, so that <laughs> anyway, completely off the subject there um, because of that the grass gets really really long and if you've got a windy day it's a bit like having a full field of crops and when the wind blows across it it looks like waves in the sea and that really appeals to me because I was born on the coast uh, you know I do I do have an, an affinity for the beach I wouldn't say I was like a total like oh I really miss being on the coast it's not like that at all um, but it's just a really nice thing when you live further inland and you're, you know, you're surrounded by green fields. When you see that nice ripply effect, there's something really satisfying about it. I really like it. Um, but yeah, it happens with grass. It's not just crops. Only if you're, only if you let your grass grow long enough, though, obviously. Right. Okay. I think that's a fairly good indication that there might be some sort of uh, crop growing in there. Let's just grab our sepia pencil. We can chuck in a few darker lines there as well. Anybody from a back, background of farming, you'll know exactly what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> uh, bright yellow wheels, green cab, it's a John Deere. Nothing runs like a deer. I feel like this is quite a calm picture as well. Like It makes me feel calm, which is nice. Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of liking that part of it. Uh, but I'm not as I'm not as enthusiastic today. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just tired. Do you know that? Normally I'm absolutely full of beans and jumping about like a, you know, like the world's exciting. But I'm just I don't know today. I don't know. I suppose it might fit with the vibe though because you're seeing this on Sunday night. Um. So I don't. Know, maybe I'm trying to just mirror the energy. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just making stuff up now. Right, let's have a wee, wee look at our cow here. I'm going to sharpen this pencil. I want a really nice point on it. And it's always nice to sharpen a pencil that comes in a subscription box because they've usually been battered about a little bit in transit as well. So it gives you a really good indicator of how strong the core is. And that's absolutely perfect. Look at that, nice pointy point. It's funny when you're drawing on such a small scale like this, it's really easy to um, denote a, a dairy cow. <laughs> It's like, just put some splodges on it. There you go. Obviously, you get beef breeds that have got splodges on them too, but everybody's like, oh, that's a cow. <laughs> some paintbrush trees. They've normally got for, um, bands around them, like not a furu, but like a collar maybe. Now, my paint's getting, it's starting to dry here, so it's getting more concentrated. Without adding any water, I just want to give these a bit of texture. I feel as if I could go bolder with this for more contrast, but I just, I don't feel that this is a contrasty piece of work. Like, I feel as if everything should be quite delicate and I don't know why, it's just the way I feel about it. There we go, that's added a bit of contrast in at the back there, happy with that. I want to use the red in its pure form for the door just because it's such a delightful colour. I've kind of ruined what's going on here, so I'm just going to take it straight out of the tube. This is actually a really nice red. I'm often quite, um, not annoyed, <laughs> God, I make myself sound like a really angry person. I'm often quite dissatisfied with reds in some colour ranges because I tend to find that they're either very pinkish or they're veering too much towards orange. And I really appreciate like a good true red. And this is pretty nice, I have to say. And then I want a sort of grey-ish colour for the roof. That's actually turned out a really pretty colour. I love it when that happens. Let's get some contrast. Whee. Okay, uh, I think I'm going to stop there. I think I come quite happy with that. Uh, okay, so that that would be one of my circular villages. I think it encompasses quite a lot of the things that I spend my time doing. Overall, this box then, this has been quite a nice box. A bit frustrated about the paintbrush situation. 
but you know what can you say you you can't exp you know and they, they do say that you can use another paintbrush that an upgrade have been quite open about that but it just kind of like spoils it a little bit i think like it kind of takes away some of the the point and the purpose the paint itself is lovely it's very very concentrated and it's a bit much for my liking but it seems to mix well um it was quite easy to mix a nice purple color you know without too much fighting with it and i'm glad we got a good range of colors i was especially glad we got the indigo color because i love colors like that this as a paint i probably wouldn't use it again as a watercolor paint if i'm honest there are other brands that i prefer it's not to say there's anything wrong with them it's just a preference thing but a little of this does go a really long way so these are really good value for money the talons gouache didn't seem to jive too well um i had to do a little bit of work there to get them to mix but again that's okay i'm probably going to keep this uh for myself because the, the white gouache that i've got just now is it's, it's kind of dying the, the tube's only got a little bit left in it so i'll keep that and top up my supplies i am going to put these rembrandt paints in the stash shop i'll talk a little bit more about that in a second so i'd love to hear your thoughts on this box also what did you think of the supplies the pencils are really handy as well this sepia pencil is a lifesaver for me so overall really enjoyed this box thumbs up might have been nice with a slightly bigger paintbrush but i did enjoy it for some of the finer details so six and two threes but yeah overall a relatively uh, relatively enjoyable experience maybe we can revisit this and make it into a sticker at a later stage after the move so speaking of the stash shop i'll put these little tubes of paint up in there for you and um, there is now a moving sale section and it is some of our older stock that i am reducing down in price just to try and shift it because the less stuff i have to move the better so there will be a sale banner when you click into the website um the link to which is down in the description um there will be a sale banner and if you click on that it'll take you to all the items that are reduced in addition to that i'm kind of de-stashing for myself as well so every after every video there will be a few items up in the shop that have come from my own personal collection that uh, i'm just not using and really need to go so you can grab yourself a bargain there some of the things that i've got for you today are uh, this set of derwent uh, water soluble metallic pencils it's just such an odd combination they're really pretty pencils they look amazing on black paper I think I've used them once since I actually got them um, and it seems such a shame because they're obviously Derwent pencils are good quality pencils so if you fancy a, a set of those they will be up. I've also got some of these Arteza uh, wood discs left over again these were used for various projects Christmas decorations um, so I've got I've got a couple of stacks of 10 of these they are, they are various sizes some have got a lot of bark around the edge some don't um, but they're all pre-drilled with a hole and these are sanded so they're actually ready to use um, again so if anybody wants to get these for uh, you know maybe like doing projects with the kids or use them for, for decorations Easter Christmas decorations and um, you can check those out too lastly this is a bit of an odd one and I don't know if it's going to uh, appeal to anybody I have a tin full of supplies from when I used to bullet journal I don't bullet journal at all now um there's there's kind of like scrapbook paper there's stencils there's loads of stickers like tons of stickers and there's quite a quite a selection of stuff in there as well as actual uh planner stickers that kind of thing so i'm just going to sell that as one bundle so if you do do a bit of uh, a bit of bullet journaling or scrapbooking then you can check that out as well right guys that is it for today thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me and uh, i hope you've enjoyed this upgrade i i actually really like this i thought this was a good box although i maybe wasn't feeling the the actual challenge today but that's okay have a nice day everyone and i'll see you back in the cave on thursday for another video bye-bye for now